Fall 2015, the Cabal's last stand, and the victory of the Star Seeds' peaceful Velvet Revolution. I just did a two-hour video about an article written by Dr. Richard J. Boylan, which has had over a thousand views in the first 24 hours. It seems that this kind of information was needed and wanted by YouTube viewers, which includes people from all 200 or so countries around the world. This evil empire, which has been created by what some call a cabal, threatens everyone on the planet. And if we don't defeat them, we're all dead meat. The slavery that can be imposed on all of us could last centuries, so we all have a vested interest in defeating them. But after you watch the two-hour video, you realize how well organized the war criminals are and how determined they are to stay in power, fighting not only the resistance on the ground, but any group which comes here to rescue us. They shoot down UFOs using advanced technology that they robbed from craft shot down in previous galactic crimes, and so their power grows, sometimes matching that of the aliens who come here. After completing the two-hour video that I did about the weaponry, the agencies of the U.S. government and the companies involved that was researched by Richard Boylan, I watched some recorded YouTube video interviews with him and learned much more. The links are in the two-hour video, so go there and watch them. Dr. Boylan has met with aliens directly, knows them personally, and says that they nullified and voided the 1960s agreement that was made between aliens and four nations of the Earth because the Earth leaders violated the agreement. Let me restate that. Richard Boylan knows firsthand that alien species exist. He has met with them. A senior scientist of Lockheed, Boyd Bushman, also met with aliens, and he shows some photos of them. I will have a video for you on that very soon because I have prepared all the images and have partially written the script for that video. I will rewrite it about 25 times and proofread it, record it, and edit the audio, and attach the images, and then it will be ready. It will take me about a week or so, but you'll get it, because it's very important. And let me tell you why it's so important. I typed Richard Boylan's name and some other keywords into Google's search engine and discovered that the state of California yanked his license to practice psychology, hypnosis, etc., because he told a patient that aliens exist. Since Richard Boylan has met with aliens, as did senior scientists at Lockheed, Boyd Bushman, I think he has a right to state that aliens are real and there is life elsewhere in the universe. I do not, however, think it's correct for any hypnotherapist to make the claim that God exists because nobody has met God. But practitioners are allowed to get away with telling patients that God exists. What's the difference? The difference is control. Some things are allowed by the despotic leaders and some things aren't. If the information frees you, you're not allowed to have it. If it continues the slavery and keeps you in the dark, it's allowed. The fields of medicine, psychology, and religion are all part of the controlled institutions. And anything they do is allowed even if it's wrong, harmful, or immoral. Doctors rob patients by prescribing drugs, and today, 70% of Americans are on some form of prescription drug. Priests molest little boys, and the Catholic Church helps them get away with it and cover up the crime. The current pope was famous for that in Argentina, where he helped child molesters get off the hook and did not even console the families of victims when there was clear and undisputed evidence that the priests were practicing perverts. The head of the Catholic Church is in on child molestation and cover-up. When organizations work in concert to cover up crimes committed by their members, in this case priests, this is organized crime. This is harmful and immoral behavior but it's okay with the evil empire. Telling a patient that aliens exist, though, is not okay with the evil empire. 
even if the doctor has personally met with aliens who fly in UFOs. Government knows they exist. They have made treaties with them. They swapped technology for people, and there are millions of people missing every year. From the two-hour video, you see the organizations that exist to deny the existence of UFOs and alien life forms. So all of you should call the California office where they canceled Richard Boylan's license to practice and urged them to reinstate his license because aliens do exist and many, many people attest to that fact. This is a fact, not a religion based on faith. When you read about the revocation of the license of Dr. Richard Boylan, you might keep this in mind, and you might help him by making a call to California to speak to the moron who still isn't aware that UFOs and aliens exist. If you don't make the call, then you're not doing everything you can to change this world and free us. Because we must resist, and making one phone call is what you can do. You are no longer powerless if you make that call. Once you have made the call, come to the comments section of this video. Give us the telephone number that you called and the person who heard your protest so we can follow your lead and do likewise. I'm writing scripts, recording audio, editing the audio, and putting images to that opera so that you can have videos to watch. I feel I'm doing my share. Don't thank me because you're back to being powerless. Do something which transforms you into someone with a small modicum of power, okay? You're not powerless unless you don't act in every way you can. You are in control of how much power you wield. This is a small task, and that moron in California needs to know that you believe that aliens are real and there is no reason to yank the license of this good man. Tell this moron that you have a pretty good understanding of what's going on in the world and that there are only two sides you can be on. You can either help the people, gain freedom from this corrupt group of dictators, or you can help the dictators. They are guilty of war crimes and breaking international law, and there is no excuse allowed for helping them. Ask this moron what kind of world he is helping to create by supporting the war criminals and the Kabbalists. Ask him if his own children will enjoy living under tyranny. This is what you can do to make yourself potent again. Otherwise, you allow yourself to be powerless. Isn't it true that we all must get involved in order to regain our freedom? You're here in hopes that the title is true and that the cabal is going down in flames. But many who read this title will let others do all the work. And they just want to sit back and do nothing, maybe wait for Jesus to return to save them. If Jesus came back, the cabal would either shoot down his UFO or have him arrested. So let's try to improve conditions here on earth prior to the return of Jesus. You know what happened to those in a flood who expected Jesus to save them? They all drowned. You know what happened to those in a burning building praying to Jesus instead of using their feet to get out of the burning building? They were all incinerated. There's a time to pray and a time to get the hell out of the burning building. You can thank Jesus for saving your life later. First, use your feet to get out of the burning building. Nobody can afford to gamble on the return of Jesus in this hour of need. You have to get busy and do something. We are now in a burning building. Our constitution has been set aside while Adolf Hitler takes over the controls on the flight deck. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their favorite alien group, and that would be us humans. Yes, we are actually aliens. We originated in the Lyra system and spread out from there as a result of wars between alien groups, in case you didn't know where we humans originated from. Yes, I know you're originally from Texas, but I'm talking before you became a cowboy. Cowboy, stop drawing your gun in front of the mirror, for Christ's sake, you look ridiculous. Who are you trying to be anyway, Doc Holliday? He was a zony, you know. 
Everyone must roll up his or her sleeves and get busy doing whatever he or she can to free the enslaved populations of the world. The evil and omnipresent entity is well organized and powerful. Don't fire lead. They fire lasers and proton weapons. They are quick on the draw and your guns, cowboy, are useless. You're outgunned and they have enormous power. We the people also have enormous power and it trumps their power if we all use it in a coordinated effort. But it's not going to be done by a few out of every 100 of us. We need all 100 of you, so please help us out. We need to win this one. Form a habit of fighting back in ways that aren't going to get you killed. You can make a phone call from your state to the state of California and complain about this license revocation of Dr. Richard Boylan. You can ask the moron who yanked his license why he did it and why he is so ignorant about aliens in this 21st century when we all know that the 1947 Roswell crash is real and it wasn't a weather balloon and crash dummies from 1954. That's what we were told in 1997, and it's another government lie. Philip Corso was an intelligence officer, and he wrote a book called The Day After Roswell. He saw alien bodies and testified to this fact in his book. Thousands of others have seen UFOs, and some have met with various groups of aliens. Ask this moron in California who yanks licenses if he is aware of all the testimony from thousands of people that aliens are in fact more real than Al-Qaeda, the Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus, and Barack Obama's certificate of birth. Ask him what's wrong with his head. Is he in need of some psychiatric care? Tell him that people who can't deal with reality are sick. Tell him to seek help before he hurts someone. He is dangerous. I feel this way because if anyone isn't aware of all the testimony of those who have interacted with aliens in some way, they are really ignorant and naive. They need to wake up to the sea of propaganda if they haven't noticed that we are being fed lies about everything. We don't have to tolerate this. We can protest. You can't protest at the airport when the TSA puts a finger up your ass because you'll miss your flight. But you can protest when you get home, can't you? Are we going to allow them to get away with this Gestapo tactic? Or are we going to kick some ass? I'm more of an ass kicker, how about you? You can write up what they did to you and record it for a YouTube video if you're not afraid of government retaliation. But if you're a wuss and you pee in your pants when the TSA steals your cell phone, your cash, or your electronic device, then you better go along to get along and leave the fighting to us. We drink real beer and we kick real ass. We don't take shit from anybody. We are not going to be anyone's slave, trust me. We're going to kick asses until Jesus returns. So while you're praying, we're going to be getting work done. Now I want to read the article, so let's get to it. I'll have the text scroll on the screen so you can follow along. Fall 2015, the Cabal's last stand, and the victory of the Star Seeds' peaceful Velvet Revolution. Star Seeds and Aware Star Kids are acting in ways which promote our society's changing into a reformed and transformed one. That Star Seed Revolution will sweep through global society like the hippie revolution of the 1960s, only much more so. The Dark Energy Global Control Group, the Cabal, fear and resist such change, but their end is coming. The dynamic tension between those of the light and those of the dark side will escalate over several more years into late 2014. Apparently, he wrote this prior to 2014. Several years prior. The cabal will not go down without a fight. That in-game fight occurs at various places on the globe. He's talking about the future, and someone apparently told him about the future, didn't they? I wonder who that could have been. The cabal will increasingly become scared, angry, and desperate with their backs to the wall. By latter 2015, 
The Cabal's campaign of escalating resistance to star seeds and other light workers' efforts to improve our world will have reached a peak, with them using even more of their Cabal developed terrorist assets to create disruption through terrorist like violence, desperately trying to slow down the star seed revolution. The cabal dirty war against increasingly organized starseeds and other light workers will not be like conventional past wars. Although the cabal will directly use terrorist violence sometimes, they will more often sneakily manipulate susceptible people in positions of power and influence into creating conditions of chaos, destruction, and intimidation that the cabal see as more favorable to their survival as the global power group. The cabal and their proxies may only occasionally use police and military force, but mostly they will rely on using intimidation, bullying, hostile negative attack propaganda, and global disruptions to keep things stirred up and prolong a status quo where they are on top. By fall 2015, enough star seeds and near adult star kids will have answered the call to join together into a band of light warriors using psychic tools, among others, to resist and defeat the cabal, trying desperately to stop the star seeds worldwide societal makeover. Star seeds and older star kids will increasingly be forming themselves into light worker brigades, having conducted training and have gotten down to business. The Star Seeds light workers will rely heavily on psychic skills and tools to counter cabal attacks and to confuse and subdue their cabal opponents, who then can be rounded up and taken out of circulation by honest police and security forces. <laughs> The star seeds and light workers will resist and defeat the cabal using largely nonviolent psychic means whenever possible. Their battle cry won't be, but could have been, use the force Luke. By conducting a primarily nonviolent protest rebellion, People's Revolution, star seeds will demonstrate a new paradigm of how to change oppressive elements in society without bloodshed. All star seed lightworker resistance will be done in accordance with the 11 universal laws and the 11 spiritual laws of the cosmos. Will any star kids and star seeds die in this conflict? By using psychic skills of precognition, intuition, reading others' energy fields, remote viewing, telekinesis, future viewing, etc., star seeds and star kids can keep themselves out of harm's way. Thus, comparatively, very few star seeds and star kids will die in the conflict. One of the challenges will be for the star seeds to develop ways to distinguish light workers from cabal infiltrators trying to sneak over to the light worker side and pretend to be fellow light workers. Star seeds have the abilities to detect such deceit and need to be alert to do so. By latter 2015, the cabal will have lost. Their global power empire will be in ruins. Star seeds and other light workers will then be free to largely complete the positive reformation and transformation of human society without the cabal resistance which has held things back for so long. Prepare now and get active for what you will do to help over the next several years to release Earth from cabal control, to rebuild a renewed society, and thus allow humankind to flourish. Richard Boylan, Ph.D., Counselor of and for the Earth. He has his email address, web page, the city in which he now lives, Diamond Springs, California. He does not want people to call him. He prefers email if you want to write to him. And he encourages people to join his online interactive group, UFO Facts 2. And that's the end of this video. I appreciate very much your watching. See you next time.
video, you realize how well organized the war criminals are and how determined they are to stay in power, fighting not only the resistance on the ground, but any group which comes here to rescue us. They shoot down UFOs using advanced technology that they robbed from craft shot down in previous galactic crimes, and so their power grows sometimes matching that of the aliens, which includes people from all 200 or so countries around the world. This evil empire, which has been created by what some call a cabal, threatens everyone on the planet. And if we don't defeat them, we're all dead meat. The slavery that can be imposed on all of us could last centuries, so we all have a vested interest in defeating them, but after you watch the two-hour events, who come here? After completing the two-hour video that I did about the weaponry, the agencies of the U.S. government and the companies involved that was researched by Richard Boylan, I watched some recorded YouTube video interviews with him and learned much more. The links are in the two-hour video, so go there and watch them. Dr. Boylan has met with aliens directly, knows them personally, and says that they nullified and voided the 1960s agreement that was made between aliens and four nations of the Earth because the Earth leaders violated the agreement. Let me restate that. Richard Boylan knows firsthand that alien species exist. He has met with them. A senior scientist of Lockheed, Boyd Bush. Fall 2015, the Cabal's last stand and the victory of the Star Seeds peaceful Velvet Revolution. I just did a two hour video about an article written by Dr. Richard J. Boylan, which has had over a thousand views in the first 24 hours. It seems that this kind of information was needed and wanted by YouTube viewers.